for years. I thought I was a good driver. In fact, I would even go so far as to say one of the best. You know, I'm careful and I follow all, all of the traffic uh, signs and when I get to a stop sign or get to a red light, I slow down in a way where once I come to a stop, you can hardly, hardly feel that the car has stopped. What I mean is, you know how you're with some people and they, you know they stop because you're going forward every time they hit the brake? The, I, I've mastered how to stop with anyone moving forward, but we just ease into that. And I just thought that I was such a great driver. Until several years back, I noticed something my wife would do while I was driving. You know, there would be times I'm driving and I would intentionally do something like, you know, drift over because um, there's something in the road or maybe I get a little closer to the car in front of me because maybe the car behind me is too close and if I slam on my brakes or hit them too fast, that person might hit us. You know, I kind of make all these good moves that normally people wouldn't think that they were so good. But I noticed when I would drift or when I would slow down or when I would turn a certain way that my wife would automatically grab the bar that's on the door next to her. And she would brace herself for impact. Now I've never gotten into an accident with my wife. But for some reason, if I drift over a little bit, it seems like to the other lane, she's bracing herself for impact. If I get too close to the car in front of me, she's bracing herself for impact. If we're driving on the highway, and maybe it seems like I might be going a little too fast, you know, just a little too fast, she's bracing herself for impact. And I started noticing this and I could see it out of my peripheral vision that she is grabbing the door and I'm wondering why is she doing that? I am such a great driver. She doesn't have to worry with me. She doesn't have to be concerned with me. I've never gotten her into an accident, praise the Lord. But while I'm driving, for some reason, she can't fully rest. And you know, it's interesting when we think about these lives that we live, especially those of us who are in Christ. Even though we know Jesus is Lord, even though we sing songs about him and we pray and we might read scripture, we might do nice things for other people, we may do all of these things, for some reason, we're unable to rest. We're holding on to some things that we don't even need to hold on to because God is in control. We're bracing for impact when we don't have to be concerned because the Lord has not given getting us into any accidents. You see, for some reason, it's so hard for us to rest as a people. And we learned last week that rest for so many of us is the missing piece in our lives. And because it's so hard for us to rest, there's stress, there's anxiety, there's so much heartache and pain, there's difficulty. So many of us feel overworked and burdened. And I feel God wants this season for us or want us in this season to get back to resting in Him. So I started this series called Finding Sabbath. And the whole point of this series is for us to achieve the rest that Jesus promised. Let me show you Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, which, which we, we will be in today. I know we were in it last time, but there's some more things I want us to look at in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and through 30. It says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, all of you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Come to me, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus said. That the... The initial thing that we have to do is simply come to him and he will give us rest. And if you ask most people that are Christ followers, they will say, yeah, I've, I've come to Jesus. Yes, I've accepted Jesus in my life. Yes, he's my Lord and Savior. But for some reason, we do not have rest. You don't have rest. You don't even know what rest feels like or looks like. But Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. But not only that, he said, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And then he says, you will find rest for your souls. You'll find it in me. That you will have rest for your souls. And we learned last time, when you study that word souls, it comes from the word suke which means existence or the breath that causes existence. So what Jesus is talking about here, he's not talking about taking a vacation. He's not talking about retirement. He's not talking about a day trip or a mental health day. What he's saying is that you will find rest for your entire existence. With every breath you take, you'll have rest. Another way to say that, you'll have peace in me. Every breath you take, every moment of your existence, You'll be in my rest. Meaning you don't have to worry. You don't have to get bent out of shape. You don't have to stress over this and how you're going to make it and things that's going to happen, what might happen to you. You'll find rest for your souls. Now, Jesus told us that. That's a promise that Jesus gave to his people that he's given to us, that we will find rest. And if Jesus given us this promise and all we had to have to do is come to him and find rest for our souls, then why is it so hard for us to find rest? Today, as we continue in this series, Finding Rest or Finding Sabbath, achieving the rest that Jesus promised. I want to talk to you about what hinders us from rest. Really, what hinders you from rest? What has hindered me from rest? Now, the scripture we're going to, Matthew chapter 11, that we just read, Jesus says this to his people. He says it. Because there's a group of people known as the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And these Pharisees and teachers of the law, over time, had initiated like 39 to 40 or approximately 40 laws about the Sabbath that had nothing to do with the initial thing that God said in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, where we read where God says, keep the Sabbath holy. They added all this stuff to it. But it wasn't just to that law. They added all different rules and traditions that the people were being oppressed by. Because they felt that to get to God and to be godly and to be a true person of God, they had to follow all these rules that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law put into place. It was heavy burden. It was weighing them down. And when we talk about what hinders us from rest, I want to look at what hindered them from rest, which are really the same things that hinder us from rest. And the first thing, and I say that word with, with, uh, lightly in a sense, the first thing that hinders us from rest, people, or I should say, who hinders us from rest? It's the people that we have allowed in our lives. Now, of course, I'm not talking about all the people, but you know who I'm talking about. It's those people that you could, you could be having a great day. 
You could be at rest, enjoying God and enjoying just being in His presence the day that He, is, that he has allowed you to have. And then there's somebody that you know could be at work, could be at school, it could be a family member that comes in and they dump everything on you or they tell you what you really don't want to know or they come in and they are not at rest and as a result they cause you not to be at rest. They, they are people that just take your peace as soon as they come into your presence. You see, during Jesus' day, that's what the Pharisees were like. The Pharisees were the people, as soon as they were there or they spoke or they came into the presence of others, they were taking peace. They were taking rest. They were causing more problems because they were there. And so many of us know people in our lives that suck the rest right out of us. They take the peace away from us if we allow them to. That's why Jesus, when he was speaking to his people, he said, come to me. Come to me. Because the people during that day kept going to the religious leaders. They allowed themselves to be in their presence. They allowed themselves or allowed the religious leaders to speak into their lives in a way that took their peace. And there's too many people that we've allowed to come into our lives, or even worse, we keep going to them. We keep going to them for whatever reason, and we are there, and as a result, they are taking our peace. That's why Jesus said, come to me. But then, another thing that hinders us from rest is our need for control. We need to control the situation. We need to control our lives. We feel like we have to make sure that we hold on to our control. Just like we hold on to some people that are no good for us, we hold on to this control over our lives. When my wife is in the car with me, one of the things that she's able to do when she grabs the door and braces for impact is that she's able to take some control, some agency, over what's happening, even though she's that I'm the one driving and navigating uh, the direction that we're going into, that allows her to have some control about what might happen. To feel maybe that you know, if I make if I hit someone, that at least she's prepared herself for that accident. And there's that need of control. That is within each of us. When we do things because we feel like if we don't do it, then it's not going to work out. We work so hard because we're trying to establish some things. Or we're trying to achieve some things in our lives. We want some material. We want wealth. We want to be able to progress. We want power. So we work and we work and some of us are killing ourselves because we just won't let go, but instead, we want to take control. There's a need for control over our lives. That's why Jesus had to remind the people during his day that was trying to get some control in navigating their own lives. That's why he had to share with them, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Those of you that have worked so hard, those of you that labor and toil, toil, and those of you that are just overburdened. You know, if you study that word or those words, heavy burden, out or heavy burdens, it means to carry weight upon your shoulders. But it's so much weight that you can barely move. You can barely, you can barely live. Or even enjoy life because you're holding on to all this weight all these burdens that are happening in life I don't know if I'm gonna make it heavy burden I need to make sure that I'm at the job because if I'm not there things won't work out 
heavy burden. The religious practices and false teachings that we learn may be growing up or we keep listening to or reading the wrong theology and we allow all these burdens because we feel like we have to work for Jesus' love. We have to do all these things for the Lord to love us or to make up for our past. And we're putting all these heavy, heavy burdens on us. Instead of remembering what Jesus said. Come to me. All of you are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Another part of scripture, he says, cast your cares upon me. For I care for you. You know, instead of holding on to control, maybe it's time to lean into God and rely on Him to carry the burdens for us. You see, sometimes we can't rest because of people. We can't enter into that rest because we desire to have control on our, over our lives. It's that need for control. But here's the other thing. We can't rest because we have so, many, so much anxiety. You know, during Jesus' day, the people were so concerned and worried about what was going to happen to them. And you can see this throughout the New Testament where people are wondering if Jesus is going to be that conquering king, the one that will come in and conquer the current establishment to take over, knock out the, the regime that was in, in place, to overturn the system and take control. So the Jewish people of that day would now be in power again. And people just had so much worry over their lives and what would happen to them. And we deal with so much today. And too many of us are anxious or dealing with anxiety because what has happened to us, what's going on around us, what's happening in our society. Over the last week, I've heard so many people talk about the mass shootings that are going on throughout our nation, especially the one in Buffalo, New York, where it seemed like this person was influenced to hate or influenced more not just to hate, but to take out their hate on a group of innocent people in a grocery store. That plans were mapped out and that there's groups of people that are in essence trying to start this racial civil war or this race war, I should say. They're just bent on hate. And I've, again, heard so many people talk about it, but it wasn't just talking about what happened and praying for the families of those people. They're talking about in a sense of what's going to happen to me. I'm worried about living as a black person in this country. I'm, I'm so concerned about, <laughs> you can't even go to a store, you can't even go into school, you can't go to, <laughs> can't go in a church building because people will run up in the air and do stuff. What's going to happen to me? And there's so much anxiety amongst us because we see all the hate, all the racism, all the pain, all the murder, all the violence that's around us. And anxiety is building and building and building. But I want to remind you of something. Scripture teaches us that I worry doesn't change anything. Only thing it does, it makes us miserable. And in fact, Jesus made it clear. He said, listen, why worry? Be anxious in nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts in your minds, in Jesus Christ. 
We're not supposed to have anxiety, but we do. And Jesus gave us a way to fix this. That's why he said in verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. I, I, we can't skip that. He says, let me teach you. Don't let the problems of this world teach you. Don't let these people that are so worried or the naysayers or the ones that have constructed social problems, don't let that teach you. Don't let history or past teach you. He said, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. The people during Jesus' day was being taught by the Pharisees. They were being taught by the Sadducees. They were being taught by other people about how they should live and how they should respond and how they should react to so many things. And Jesus is saying, listen, push all of that aside and let me teach you. And you know, it's in times like these that we have to let Jesus teach us how to respond. Let Jesus teach us how to react. Not listening to all these other folks about how we should react, how we should respond. Not listening to ourselves and allowing ourselves to get worried and scared and fearful when we know that Jesus doesn't want us to be that. In fact, the scripture tells us God has not given us. You know, I, I wish we would take our Bibles and just underline how much God has given us and what he has not given us. Because it says God has not given us a spirit of fear. Therefore, if we are fearful, that spirit didn't come from God. If we are fearful, it has nothing to do with God, what God has done put into us what he has teach, taught us because the scripture says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind. And that's why we can, when we come to Jesus, allow him to speak to us on a regular basis. Not allowing the burdens and the weight and the problems and the situations and the naysayers and the people speak into our lives, but instead hear from Jesus because he's humble and gentle at heart. And when we learn from him, when we take that yoke upon us, Jesus' yoke, not the yoke of the system or the problems or the, the pain, when we allow the yoke of Jesus to be upon us, we learn from him. He said that's where we find rest. We'll find rest for our entire lives. We'll find rest for our very existence. But you know, these things I'm talking about, people control anxiety, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. Because sometimes the anxiety is built because of people. Sometimes we feel like we need control because the anxiety that is produced was produced in our lives. But Jesus is saying, learn from me. Take my yoke and you will find rest for your souls. I don't know if I said this already, but if I didn't, I want you to know now. I have four reasons, four things that hinder us. There's many more, probably things you could think of, things that has hindered you specifically in your life that I might not get to today. But here's the fourth one, and that's confusion. We're confused by what's going on. Maybe things that we've heard other people say, especially in this time and age where you can have your, your whole slate of preachers and all these different people speak into your life and it can be confusing if you don't truly know what you believe and how you believe it. And during Jesus' day, there were Jewish people that were so confused, those who were following Jesus or wanted to follow Jesus, but they were so confused because of what they were hearing from the Pharisees, what they were hearing from the teachers of the law. They were confused about how they should live. They were confused about God's grace and the law. They were confused about Jesus Christ and how to live. 
And I'm going to talk more about this next week. But there's so many people today that's confused about rest and Sabbath. Because <laughs> we live in a society where we're taught to work and to work hard. But we're never told to rest. Yes, take that one week vacation and, you know, wait the whole year or that one week in the summer or whenever your vacation time is. And that's your only time of rest. Maybe you might have two weeks. But it's caused us to be so confused. And that's why Jesus says to the people, my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. You know, it's interesting. He says his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Another way to say light is easy. <laughs> so he's saying burden, easy, yoke. Or burden is easy, his yoke is easy. All that God gives us, all that the Lord has for us, is easy or it makes it easier for us to live. It's easier for us to do. It's easier for us to work and still have rest, still have peace. Because we understand who our Lord is and what he can do. We focus on him and him alone. We focus on living for him. We focus on following him, recognizing that he is our source. And that we will be okay if we just live in Him. You know, it comes down to this. You know, what should we do? These, there's so many hindrances. And we'll, we'll talk more about the specific how-tos as we move forward from next week on. But what should we do now? Uh, before we can get to the how-tos, before we can start putting in practices in our lives and, and things on a regular basis, what must we do now? Well, I want you to know that it's time to let go. It's time to let go of that anxiety. It's time to let go of the control it's time to let go of, of the confusion. And yes, there's some people that we have relied on, depended on, that we have to let go. And it may not be necessarily let go like you'll never speak to them again, but you don't allow their anxiety to become your anxiety. You don't allow their lack of peace to become your lack of peace. You don't allow their problems to become your problems. Most of all, you don't allow them to steal your rest. It's time to let go. I asked my wife a question one day after a while noticing it, noticing her grab onto the door whenever I would make a move that she didn't like while I was driving. I said, you you really make me feel like the worst driver in the world. I thought I was such a good driver. Why do you just keep holding on? Why do you always grab for that bar when I'm doing certain things? I haven't gotten us into an accident all these years we've been together. Why do you do that? You know what she said to me? She said she didn't realize that she was doing it. It was just a an automatic response, just a natural reaction that she had, and she didn't even recognize that she was doing it. And she shared with me that it's probably from the time she was in an accident with another family member as a child, an accident that was a really bad accident. And all that time, years later, she just holds on, she just reacts and just grabs the bar. When it seems like we're in danger, even though of course I know we're not. She's unable to rest 
because she's been so used to not resting due to what happened in the past. And so many of us are able to rest due to our experiences, due to how we reacted in the past, due to what's around us. We're just unable to rest. It's just a natural response to be busy. It's a natural response to be anxious. It's a natural response to not have peace. But I want you from this day forward to give yourself permission to let go and lean into the Lord. Just, just let go and lean into the Lord because the scripture tells us we come to him, he gives us rest. We take his yoke upon us, learn from him that we will find rest for our souls. You need to this week, I just want to encourage you this week. I want you to find those things that, in, that is in your life that has hindered you and allow God to help you to let it go, to release it to him, to cast the cares on him because he cares for you. And when you do that, you will truly find the rest that Jesus promised.